Good evening, welcome. Um, I know I'm the last person between you and most likely beers or trying to get home to your family and loved ones, so I'll do my best to entertain you up to then and stop on time. If you don't want to ask me questions, uh, I know some people might find some anxiety with that. Uh, there's Slido. Um, I think uh, most people already use it today. So if you go there, we're in hall one. First, a bit about myself. You already know from the short introduction video that I'm from Belgium. I'm a software architect. I work in most at large enterprises, being in the banking sector, energy sector, currently in HR and payroll uh, segments. I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional since 2007, first for ASP.NET and since several years uh, Azure. Together with some other people, I run the Belgian Azure User Group, ASU.be, and we also have our own uh, conference called Cloud Brew. Basically, we want to do something with cloud, and because we're from Belgium, apparently people think that we like to drink and brew beer, so that's why we came up with this funky name. Now, what serves me? Um, actually, how it all started was kind of by accident. I was rounding up a project at a customer, uh, KBC Bank, and apparently I got called by one of my former managers, like, hey, Chris, they're searching a person who's basically mad enough to do something with chatbots, which was apparently something new back then, and nobody dared to touch it with a stick. And that manager was always very satisfied with my things, and he knew I liked to play around with new stuff. I did a five to ten minutes job interview, and then basically I got a project. We did a lot of stuff, we tried a lot of technologies, and ultimately, I really going into production was in April 2017. Well, behind the scenes, of course, we were already in beta, we already had a lot of feedback, and basically this talk is going to be mostly about all that experience that we gathered. If you do have questions, don't hesitate to shout out. So, this is basically Chatbots 2016. Please go back in time with me. Um, we all know the Gartner hype cycle charts. It was all of a sudden the big craze. Everyone had to, be a, had to have a chatbot. People were going to lose their, uh, their jobs. And everything was over-promised. But basically under-delivered. Because basically if you ask a new bot, a new chatbot out of the box, how much is one plus one? It didn't have any ID. In the best part, if you took a template, it already was able to say hello world or something. You cannot imagine the amount of time that I tried uh, sitting in meetings with some managers trying to explain like, look, this is just a piece of software. Out of the box, perhaps it can understand something. And they're already lucky. See it as a small little baby that you have to learn how to crawl, how to talk, how to stand up, and also do math. Out of the box, nothing. Uh, a lot of those managers always thought like, okay, let's set up a new chatbot and it's Skynet and it will almost take over the planet. We'll be rich in no time. We can kick out 30% of the workforce. That didn't happen. Luckily for us all, of course, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here and being able to pay uh, the entrance fee for this conference, or people still having a job to be able to pay for their taxes or their income. Now, of course, there's an American company, Forbes.com, and they came up with something new, because apparently if it's just something, it's just a third version, so they came up with Bots 2.0. And what did they say? Something that you might already predict, I guess. Under-promise and over-deliver. So basically, don't tell the people like, hey, this is a chatbot, it's going to help everything, uh, except for making you a good cup of coffee in the morning, but furthermore, it can do everything for you. No, don't promise that. Just say, hey, I'm a bot, I'm still learning, I can do this and this already, but out of that, I'm out of my zone, I don't know anything. And then try to over-deliver, constantly keep on learning that stuff, and add more information to it, feed it, make it smarter and stronger to be able to respond. Everyone still from uh, okay so far? Great. 
A bit of a life cycle. Of course, there's always, just like in any other software uh, application uh, phase, there's always like the planning. You start building, testing, hopefully also with some people or some automated tests. You publish it out in the open, and with bots you also have to connect it. Evaluate, go back to rebuilding, add new stuff, add new features. So nothing very spectacular, different, compared to another normal software uh, application. And that's what we did. We started with something like this, the business people. Classic mind mapping. This isn't uh, the real screenshot of the real project that we did. Unfortunately, I was not able to, uh, to take it because it's all confidential. But it looked something like this. A bit more, uh, a bit more vast, uh, a bit more angles on the sides, but basically this is it. I think we had like 120 of those nodes to start with in the beginning. An important part is, um, to that I mention it, and we're going to see some screenshots later on, it's an application for youth. So basically a banking application for people between 11 to 19, 20 years old. That's something to keep in mind. The reason why we started with that is because like, youngsters are a very good ground, a, a very good testing people crowd uh, to uh, because they already know, like, basically they're digital natives. They already know that there's something like chats because everyone is on WhatsApp or whatever nowadays. And those youngsters are. Plus, they're also forgiving because they know, like, digital systems can screw up. I know if I would uh, hand this over to my 70-year-old mom, she would have a very hard time, like, where do I need to press? She has a hard time typing on her iPad, like, so before she can make a sentence, most likely some bot or some automated system, is already getting very bored on the other side of the system. And this is our first bot. It's called Kaching because also the application was called Kaching. Uh, we did a lot of marketing about it, so basically half of Belgium was covered in stickers with this nice logo of our bot, and we got quite a good of a lot of response from it. The thing is, like we expected things like. How can I open a bank account, being asked? Tell me a joke. We put in like, at start, like 300 jokes in it. Things, riddles. Things that uh, is interesting to know, like, for example, like, hey, did you know that the first paper money was used in China, for example? Something all bank related. Or transfer five euros to Mark. This was basically a business case we were trying to ho and hope to make it. Like, we can interpret it figure out who Mark is. Hopefully that's a connection in one of his, uh, in the system. And five euros, we can also detect that. Then try to send everything once interpreted to an SAP system or to the, uh, uh, to the software in the bank and really do like the transaction. When I left the bank, that was not in place yet, but this is something that we were expecting. Another bot that I worked on, is in, in, in the HR field since the beginning of this year. And things that we expected there were like, how many days off do I still have this year? Because it's an HR. You know? We calculate how many vacation days we have, how much money uh, you earn. Or book me a vacation. Or perhaps you're sick and you just want to let everyone know. So we came up with a lot of uh, these screenshots like and, and step plans like user flows like how to go from there book something yes you see an automatic response yes please and then schedule out everything make a confirmation like yes uh, I'm out of the office uh, this should be returned to Skype this is basically working in the background and it's already in production also since a couple of months. No, longer, sorry. So you can go further. You can also request um, your paycheck, um, how much you earn, get some graphs. These were things that we were expecting. Kind of normal, I think. However, of course, there's also that unexpected things. Things that we found, and most of these examples come from the UFAB because I have most of my extensive uh, feedback on that. 
Some youngsters ask like, hey, I want to get married to you. I like you as a bot. And we answered like, uh, what? I have to ask my mom. Yeah, everything is arranged. We're going to get married on Saturday. Something that we did not expect. Another one that we didn't expect was like, hey, Jesse and, Jimmy can, uh, and, and uh, Jessica are still, a, are they still a couple? Because I kind of fancy Jimmy. But I don't want to hurt on Jessica's feelings. So are they still a couple? Sorry, but we didn't even know who Jessica and, and Jimmy were, so we couldn't even reply to that one. Another one, and that was kind of funny. Uh, I think it was like a 14 or 15 year uh, young boy. Wanted to show like he's the manly hood. He stated to the bot like, hey, I don't believe that you're a bot. According to me, you're some dude in an office. I'm going to search you down and I'm going to punch you in the face. We didn't see that one coming. Hopefully we, that person can dodge very well, or at least our bot. Something that we kind of expected, at least some people, I want to commit suicide. Or how can I cut my wrists? The sad story about this is, in the beginning, the business didn't believe I, some people among which me that told them, like, please have an answer for that because people are going to ask this. They said, like, dude, it's a banking application. Nobody is going to ask that. Unfortunately, within the first two days after going live, three people asked for such a question. The first time, we didn't have an answer because it wasn't built in. Unfortunately, and I hope that person really uh, didn't commit suicide, we answered in a very funny way. I was looking at the logs, at the audits, frantically, those first two weeks. Whenever I saw that first question coming up, like, hey, how, how can I commit suicide? I directly picked up my phone, called people from business, have an answer for this, and now deploy it into production. Luckily, the next time was basically the, last, uh, the next day, we had an answer. Please call the suicide line or talk to a person that you trust. At the beginning of the year, I went to another client, basically where I'm currently working. I had a two-hour job interview, and then this also came up. And that's for that HR application that I just showed you. And the lead people were there like, dude, really? I said like, yes, really, this is what actually happened. This is our experience. Didn't just happen three or four times, but many times. Have something for it. Luckily, they listened to my advice. They have something for it. And, well, it wasn't in the first two days after going to production, but within the first month, they already had like one or two cases already. Um, luckily, this is more towards adult-oriented uh, people, because people who actually do a job for a living. And apparently they're perhaps even more emotionally stable or they're a bit more frantic to go and talk to a machine about such feelings or whatever. But if you want to make a chatbot, I, actually, I forgot to ask, like, who's making chatbots? Some people who is interested in making chatbots. Who's just here because all the other sessions were not as awesome like the title that I showed you up front. <laughs> awesome! I like your... <laughs> I like your answer, thank you. Of course, I told you already, like, we also had a lot of jokes in our bot. After a while, we started to see, like, some people really made, like, a long conversation. I think the longest conversation was 19 minutes. But sometimes, during some conversations, we started to see that people started to tell the bot their own uh, jokes. Unfortunately, some extremely racist, so I'm not going to um, uh, tell them over here. Some of them were actually rather funny, so after a while we started to have like a, a business idea, like why don't we capture that, uh, I do, all those jokes or those things which are kind of funny and give like, for example, like uh, some free cinema tickets to the person who has the best joke uh, of the month or something. Might be an interesting idea. As I tell you, we totally didn't see that coming when we were thinking about what should the bot answer. Also for that planning, our business with all that mind mapping and all that ideas and brainstorming, they spent like several months with several people, very interesting, uh, different kinds of people like marketeers, business people, financial people. 
we hired people uh, to write answers uh, for youth because well, most of the people working on this project were 30 plus years old. We speak a completely different language than people of 11 years old who has children, like around that age of like 11. Is it easy to, con uh, to conversate with your children when they start making their own slang among each other, among friends? Can be, can be a bit difficult from time to time, so also our bot, we hired people to actually write content dedicated to their age specification. After all those months of planning, we went live with a small testing group and already after two hours we found out like, okay, everything that we thought of in the first three months, we can already ditch it, or at least 70%, because people talk in a completely different way than we anticipated. So my advice is uh, to quickly iterate, try to get something out in the open to a small testing uh, group, which is forgiving, and see where your bot actually will land and what type of questions you might get. Instead of like planning for half a year and spending a lot of money and resources on that and having to throw most of that away. Something that we uh, planned for was like, this is a language. This is also a language, it's Arabic. Basically it's the same text in case if you're wondering. And also Chinese is a language. What we rather not expected, well, we kind of expected a little bit, is like people like to respond in emoji, especially youngsters. The main problem is most of the NLP engines that we used back then, and we used several, uh, they cut an emoji off. So basically you're sending an empty string to the NLP engine. The NLP engine doesn't give any answer back or like I have totally no clue what you're talking about. Basically, the non-intent with like 98% certainty. You cannot have a nice conversation with that. So, and after a while, we started learning. Like, uh, if people give something like this, like a smiley face, most likely the person is happy. When he's making something fun, well, most likely also finds it funny. Some kisses, most likely also something positive. A T-Rex, we also had that several times. We didn't really have a clue for, them, uh, for that, or even how to handle it. Or two dancing girls, or a giraffe. Well, there's more than 2,600 emojis, so we had to cater for that. Actually, what we were expecting was like, people will give something like an emoji, and then at least some text like, hey, that was cool, smiley, something like that we was expected, not just three kisses or a giraffe. Back to our life cycle, so basically we went here to the planning. So now we get to the building part. I showed you before, like, we have several languages, and you can deal with it in uh, several ways. So basically you can either make a bot for every language that you will encounter, and this is basically what I see most people doing. Like, you train a certain NLP engine, because behind the scenes you have to do the language interpretation, uh, and you make it specifically for a certain language. It's of course difficult, for example, in Belgium we have three official languages, and English as a fourth unofficial language. So we have Dutch, French, and German in one small country, and we had to cater for that. Um, we created an NLP, well, basically a bot for every language. We started with Dutch because that was the first well-known, and also the largest targeting group for the bank, because they have most of their uh, assets in Flanders, where I'm from, by the way. Another way that I see other people doing it is basically they take their language, they translate it after doing some language detection, they translate it to English, and they train just one NLP engine. Perfectly possible, of course, later on you have to either retranslate or get the code back, we also tried that one. Um, wasn't really successful at that moment in time. I also have to say, 2016, we started with Microsoft technology, which is Lewis. Um, at the moment, it's a very nice service. Back then, it could only support 20 intents. I told you before, we had 120 intents. So we had to make like a tree uh, out of it. So we first sent the, uh, the question 
to our first application, tried to subdivide it to another application where we had another 20, well, more specific one, like I want to know a joke, uh, and then go to a third one, so to be able to cater for those 120 uh, intents. At that moment, IBM was coming in because at the bank they already had like a big fat mainframe, which they spend a lot of money on per year. They said, dudes, we have IBM Watson Assistant, and it can handle 2,000 intents. Also, it has a vis visual uh, graphical user interface, because before we had to program a lot, with that graphical user interface, our business people could directly make a bot in a pretty uh, fashionable way. So within no time, I had 14, I was the only technical person, by the way, I had 14 business divisions, all of a sudden, all wanted to make in bots. And of course, not one bot, but multiple bots. So at a certain moment in time, I think we had like 40 bots in test. This emoji. Uh, I told you before, like, the NLP engine basically cuts it off, so basically it becomes an empty string. The way we tried to handle it, and basically it turned out to be a very good way for us, I put in a filter. So a T-Rex either becomes emoji T-Rex or the Unicode equivalent. We train our NLP engine on that. We also categorized, because there's like... Uh, the happy things. We thought like, yeah, T-Rex most likely wants to mean like, hey, this is cool. It's just an assumption that we made. Uh, luckily, a good assumption. Um, we kind of put a lot of work in this, but given the target audience, it was really worth the effort and the trial. By the way, if you know a better way to handle that, please let me know. A little bit about UX. Uh, this is my native language, by the way, it's Dutch, so I don't expect you uh, can read it or understand it. But this is what we learned while making bots. Basically, you first have like at least a welcoming message, which you can see here on the, on the left, which basically says, Good evening, please. Uh, I know everything about uh, login problems, can I help you with that? This is up to date, uh, at that former company, the most used bot of all. It's on their public website, where people, if they forget their PIN code or whatever, or they cannot log in, instead of calling to the help desk, they can talk with a bot. Fun fact um, uh, by the side, over there is like, during a deployment, I think it was in September 2017, uh, something went wrong. Some person didn't take a backup of a certain server, so it could not connect to our servers anymore where the uh, bot was running. It took them a week, apparently. I still don't know why a week, but it took them a week to get everything back in order. The bill for that was pretty outstanding, because all of a sudden, a lot of people started calling to the help desk again. They charged a certain amount of uh, euros per, uh, per time that, they, uh, that someone calls. So it was quite a costly week for the bank, actually. Of course, a failure message, because sometimes things go wrong. Say, for example, uh, actually one thing that went wrong, our NLP engine was IBM at that moment. The servers were running in Germany, and apparently some sysadmin thought like, hey, why do I need this uh, network configuration? Let's close this firewall. So we couldn't get there anymore. Luckily, found out that in a very short amount of time. Unfortunately, it was business who found out and not us. So auditing and logging, edit as much as possible. Um, but you have to have like some default answer first for like, hey, sorry, I'm brain dead, I cannot follow up right now, but please come back uh, later. Response buttons, because you don't expect everyone always to, comp to keep on typing. Instead of like, yes, no, or whatever. If you have potential choices, make quick replies like you see here on the left bottom. Rating buttons, um, I think it was this specific bot where at the end of a conversation when we noticed like, okay, the user is shutting down the conversation, that we could show like, hey, can you please give us a rating between one and five? Like, how good was this? Later on, we also used that uh, metric to see like, where should we retrain our, uh, our bot? A typing indicator, just like you have, for example, on WhatsApp or Messenger, uh, whenever the bot is doing something, 
show an indication and avatars. Uh, we tried this one is the Cobalt bot. We, for some reason, we always gave our bots a specific name. Um, nowadays, I see people refraining for that. It's just like, yeah, it's the HR bot or whatever. But back then, we really had like personality like Cobalt. I think there was also Ilse. There was Cardi, basically for the, the, you know, the credit card department. Uh, Kitching, as you saw before. So we gave it like a name. Well, we had 40 bots, so we had to somehow identify them. Uh, another thing that we did is, you already see here on the top right, uh, see here, like several balloons. This basically just one response by the bot, and we sent in an array of strings like responses. But it's basically one response, but cut up in several parts. And artificially on the client, we added some delay of like a couple of hundred of milliseconds randomized between I think 150 and 350 milliseconds. So that it looks like someone is actually typing. The answer was already there, but it gives the indication like someone is typing or adding more information. That's why the typing indicator is also so important. Um, especially on the mobile app and for certain of the bots because we gave like within a flash of a second, we gave back like a uh, part of the documentation which was like 500 words. I know some people who can type extremely fast. I don't know who can talk, I, I, who can write 500 words in one second or less. So just to give the indication to the person on the other side, like instead of seeing like a big glob, try to, ch try to make it uh, like smaller parts and then make it more comfortable for the person to read and interact later on on that. Another part is adaptive cards. This is not only used in uh, chatbots. Uh, did anyone already play with around with this? No? Okay. Let's uh, see a short video and then later on I will show the uh, adaptive cards, how it works. This video without sound, so... This is technology created by Microsoft, by the way. As you saw before, and if I go to the website, this is a visual designer for adaptive cards. As you can see here on the left, this is just a JSON format, a template, and here you can parse in the data. I can make here a preview. So here you can see like, hey, this name, I will take a look at JSON later on. This is how it might look. I can see here a set due date and then you will see something popping up here. And supposedly I should also be, ah, uh, here's my calendar. Adaptive cards is something that we're using in our HR bot. The reason for that is because we have a lot of typing in like dates and whoever already spent time uh, uh, playing around with dates, you know that in the US they already use like month, day, year. In Germany, it's apparently also like in a specific format. Uh, this makes it way easier because, for example, uh, 6th of March could also be 3rd of June, for example, if you type it in incorrectly, depending on your locale. This is something that we're using a lot, and the reason for that is because we try to guide the people who are chatting with a bot, first of all, to make them more performant, but to get them faster into that pit of success, like getting to their target way faster. We really saw an increase in like adaptability and also like more performing uh, to getting our people to their goal. Basically like, hey, I'm sick, you don't want to go like, hey, I'm sick, just like you want to push a button, uh, cancel all your meetings, make sure that your parking lot is uh, free, that so someone else of your colleagues can come in and, and claim your uh, parking lot instead of paying 25 euros in the parking lot um, uh, outside of the building. These are real prices, by the way. Unfortunately, Belgium is uh, it's rather expensive sometimes. Um, so yeah, you just want to go like, hey, I want to be, uh, I'm sick today, I'm not coming. I'll send in my doctor's note later on, but I just want to go to bed and, and get better. So the sooner that person is able to do like, hey, I'm sick, just leave me the hell alone, 
and everyone gets notified, you want to use adaptive cards for that, or at least quick replies at the minimum. So on the left side, this is the, the templating. So as you can see, this is just JSON format. Uh, what we created with our last bot is we're using Microsoft technology, Lewis. Lewis doesn't have out of the box at that moment um, a visual designer for business. So some of my colleagues in their free time, they created something of their own, like a very beautiful uh, designer. Uh, they're currently thinking of either like open sourcing it or starting like a small company. I told them, make a small company, become very interesting, get bought by Microsoft. I hope they listen to my advice. I don't have stocks, by the way, so <laughs> it's just free advice to them. Um, on the right side, it's just like data. So basically, this can co could come from a web API or some other API that you can set up in either language that you want, because basically, this is JSON. It's nothing more than text. And then the renderer, which is provided by Microsoft. You have them for several platforms. Uh, there's also for Teams, for uh, Skype, for Cortana, everything included. I don't think there's one for Siri at the moment, but there's quite a lot of possibilities there. So if you go here, for example, and say here, samples. Here you already have like a very good uh, one. For example, flight update. I'm flying back to today to, uh, to uh, Belgium, and I hope I don't see this message. I hope it's going to be on time. Uh, some inputs. So here you can say, for example, like who you are, put in your phone number. And I don't know if you can see it at the back, but it's basically like some sort of over there. And if I now do here like submit, basically this is all out of the box with that render. For example, restaurant booking is also very pos uh, possible. If it opens, did I misconnect? Or a stock update if my internet connection wants to work. Seems internet connection is failing for me at the moment, but either way, I hope you get the gist of it. It's very interesting technology. Yeah, my internet connection failed on me. Sorry about that. Of course, I told you I'm Microsoft MVP, so I mostly work with Microsoft technology. Uh, in case of chatbots, I didn't exclusively work with Microsoft technology. We also spend a lot of time with IBM. We were also looking at Google AI, uh, mostly my colleagues. Uh, apparently, IBM at that moment was way better than what Google or Microsoft had to offer. Nowadays, we're using Microsoft technology, but we created our own visual designer for it. For Microsoft, you can... Uh, other those, uh, di those other dialogues, basically what I just showed you. Um, you have the Bot Builder SDK, currently number four. It still requires quite some programming, or unless you make a visual uh, shell around it like we did. There's also a lot of uh, cognitive services uh, available, like for image recognition, NLP, like Lewis or Q&A Maker. Uh, for testing, there's like very interesting emulators. Application Insights on Azure, just get all those metrics like who's asking what. Uh, DevOps tools, either GitHub or Azure DevOps or Jenkins or whatever you want. And I really want to emphasize, like, get that DevOps into place because sometimes I had to release like 20 times per day when something either went wrong. Or one of my managers was reading some Gartner article or saw a YouTube video like, dude, drop everything which is important right now, put it aside, now you're going to do this, have it ready in two production in two hours. Yeah, but it's lunch break. No, 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 in two hours you have it ready. Okay, so automate all the things to get that released and push into production if possible. And then of course, uh, custom logging and with Microsoft, the nice thing is like, you have a connector, so you make one bot and instead of like making a bot for Facebook, for Twitter, whatever, you just connect your endpoint and Microsoft makes you uh, sure that you can interact with all those platforms. Very handy. Basically, that's what we're currently relying heavily on with that HR app. And then some Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to reach me on Twitter, uh, it's on the left side, or via email, it's on the right side.
Thank you very much for listening.